Hi there, this is Dr. Pan recording from Tucson, Arizona. Hoping that you're having a good math day. Thank you for watching this clip on solving a equation here. There are two methods because the root is relatively low. If it's not x to the 10th power equal to 8, then we can have two methods. One, of course, is we're going to do the factoring x minus 8, x minus 8, x minus 2. So basically, I'm using the formula of the a cubed minus b cubed is equal to a minus b a squared plus a b plus b squared. Okay, so here, 8 is 2 to the cube. So I have x squared plus 2 times x plus 2 squared equal to 0. So x equal to 2 for one of them. And the other one, x squared plus 2x plus 4 equal to 0, we will use the quadratic equation here. a equal to 1, b equal to 2, c equal to 4. So x is equal to minus 2 plus minus b squared, 4 minus 4ac, the whole thing divided by 2. So we have minus 2 plus minus, that's a 16, 4, that's 12 minus 12, so I have an i coming out. And then minus 12 is equal to minus uh, 2 radical 3, not a minus i. Okay. So 12, let's put it in there, 2. One more simplification. Minus 1, let's pull the 2 out, plus minus i radical 3 divided by 2. So I have x equal to minus 1 plus radical 3 times i, it's one of them, and x equal to minus 1 minus radical 3i. And also, we have, earlier, we have x equal to 2. So we have three roots, which is what expected because the power of the x is 3. All right, this is a method we can use so long the cubic order is the highest one. Another method is this French mathematician Abraham de Moore. I hope I didn't abuse his last name too much. What he is saying basically is let's convert it into complex numbers. So x is going to be in term of r e to the i theta. And let's put a left hand side is r cubed e to the i 3 theta. Uh, multiplication equal to 8. I'm going to rewrite 8 as in 8 e to the i, which is 2k pi. Well, this is because this is a, gives you the 1. And since we're looking for 3 roots, k equal to 0, 1, and 2. Now, if this is not familiar for you, it's uh, no big deal. You're going to run into it in end up the trigonometry and a little bit at beginning of complex analysis. Anyway, so r is equal to 2, and then I also have 3 theta is equal to 2k pi, and then k equal to 0, 1, and 2. So my thetas, theta 1 equal to 0, theta 2 is equal to 2 pi over 3, or 120 degrees. Say so the 3 is 4 pi over 3, or 240 degrees. So solutions are x1 is equal to r, which is 2, times the cosine theta 1 plus i sine theta 1. This one is pretty easy, and it turned out to just be 2. Next one, it's not complicated, it's just a messy. 2 cosine of, uh, let's see what I have, 20, 120 degrees plus i sine 120 degrees. x2 equal to 2. And this one, uh, I have uh, minus half plus i radical 3 over 2. Because this is the second quadrant here. And I have recovered that x2 equal to minus 1 plus i radical 3. Okay, one more to go. 
x3 is equal to 2 times cosine 240 degrees plus i sine 240 degrees. And this is 2 times, let's see what I have, minus 1 minus i radical 3. Okay, so x3 is equal to minus 1 minus i radical 3. Okay, so as you can see, both methods give you so exactly the same. I have a suspicion this is more for algebra 2 students. And here you have a little bit of trig and a little bit of complex analysis, or maybe begin, beginning of calculus 1. Okay. So all roads lead to Rome in the end will end up with exactly the same answers. Hope that's clear. Once again, from Tucson, Arizona, this is Dr. Pan. Please let me know if the video has been helpful to you. I would love to have a comment or a thumb up. Until next time, have a confident day.